How you doing, everybody? It's I, Mr. Nihon Tiger, and I am here to talk to you about the future. Not necessarily the future of this channel. No, 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 no. That would be an entirely, entirely different thing. Talk about the future of sim racing. Ooh. <laughs> now, specifically, they did the update for August. So this is about next season. We're going to talk about new things and shiny things that are on the way to an iRacing stream near you, including this one. Because there's some cool stuff we're going to we're going to we're going to do. We're going to do some cool stuff. And that is coming next month. So you have a month to prepare for this. All right, so let's uh, let's go through the update here. We'll try and tr take not half an hour this time like I did last time. Uh, so starting off with the traditional hello, blah, 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 blah. They hired a few new people. Um, I know hat, tip of the hat to um, Justin Yee for seeing that they hired this. I actually overlooked this because it's usually just like, oh, we hired a few people, but... Specifically, they hired somebody highly capable developer who is a principal level multiplayer netcode engineer at one of our competitors. So it appears they are going to be hard at work on getting the netcode stuff taken care of, which is going to be fantastic. We want that. We want that done. Um, some stuff with the AI software engineering graphics, as as to be expected. But yeah, they've got some. They made some new hires. They've got some new people who are going to be on staff. Um, I'm sure we'll find out exactly who it is in, in due time. Um, it sounds like maybe these people necessarily haven't started or they may just be starting and they don't necessarily want to be like, hey, we got so-and-so, you know. Well, don't count your chickens for a hatch kind of thing. So looking at the actual content for next season, we start off with tracks and specifically this little bad boy right here. This is Cadwell Park, which is a track over in the UK. Um, yeah, I've driven this one before. I've driven this not in real life. I've driven it in the Seto Corsa on a mod for that. Oh boy, um, this one's gonna be real interesting. Closest thing I probably could compare it to might be something like um, Bolton Park. It's a very uh, tight and tricky track. There's a lot of elevation change, more so than a lot of the other tracks in the UK. Um, there's these big, there's this big uphill section where you go uphill. It's my my mouse is not showing. Okay, but like there's like this straight where it goes from like the the part where it goes from like blue to purple to red is like all uphill, and then it goes back downhill to this tight corner. And there's this huge, big old jump in the middle of the track and I do mean jump um, if you take it too fast you will you will literally go through the air kind of thing so very tight very tricky a lot of elevation change this is gonna be fun for people who want to go out and do like a lot of low powered stuff um, I can't say I don't think this will be quite as fun in some of the downforce cars i think it'll be a little bit a little bit harder because there's not a lot of straight so you can't like the first section of the track you can really get some speed and then the rest of the rest is really tight and tricky so it's going to be very very difficult um four layouts with this the full layout the motor layout which is adds a little chicane um there's a club layout which is half the track and woodlands which is the other half of the track so um yeah this will be this will be fun and we'll, we'll do a, when this comes out, we'll do a drive through of it in MX-5 as I usually do. Um, one, because it's a car that will be very well suited for this kind of track. And two, because that's, that I generally pick when I do my track drive throughs I, I pick one car so that I can have that consistent feedback and understanding for every track I do. And then for, for new car testing, I always do Daytona road course. Um, for 
uh, road cars just because it's big enough and it has enough diversity in it that I can really get a good feel for how that how the car is going to feel. Um, but you keep those constants, and then the variable you change is either the track with a single car um, that you're comfortable with, or you ch keep the track that you're comfortable with that you can do a lot of testing on, and you change the car. So that's how that works for me. Um, but yeah, more discussion here. Uh, they talk about some of the, they have a new broad maps feature for detail that they're gonna add. Um, which sounds like it's going to be really cool. Reconfirm that Thrux Thruxton and Croft will be coming in the future, so that's two other British tracks. Uh, not really surprising. No word about uh, BTCC happening. British GT ain't happening. If you want to you want to do British GT stuff, you have to go play a set of course at Competizione. Um, that's where your that's where the British GT stuff is. Um, until SRO decides it wants to work again with iRacing on licensing stuff, which I, seems not likely. Um, probably not going to see it. Anyways, yeah, so that'll be out Season 4. And also, maybe out, there's a 50-50 shot of this, uh, is the Spa Rescan, which will be free if you already have the track. Um, and you'll get both the current and the new one in one package, like they have been doing. Um, recently, they might miss the Season 4 build. They're kind of rushing to get it out but it may miss it and this will be the the modern version of the track so i'll have the the extra runoff the new stands at ready on all the probably all the the new gravel traps that they put around the track that replaces a lot of the tarmac runoff uh, it's like at, at puhan and blanchemont and um those areas um you'll you'll see probably some runoff there so it's going to be a little more tricky you won't really be able to uh, push the limits i think as much as you used to be able to do there so yeah we'll see we'll see how that goes um really kind of curious if we're gonna get all three scans again um i don't necessarily know if they use the old the classic layout pits anymore They're, it's still there but i don't know if they use them i know they use use them as part of like an extended pit for the 24 but i don't know if they use them for anything else they might um and there's a new car coming, which is cool. So it's this bad boy. The BMW M4 GT4 Evo is headed here. A little bit of a surprise. We didn't know that they were doing that one. Um, so that's cool. Um, well, actually, there was a little bit of a, a hint from someone, but it was on an obscure board. Uh, apparently, they have scanned both of the new BMWs. Um, so that may be happening in the future. Uh, but this is replacing the, the F82 in most of the series and the BMW. Hey, Jason. Yeah, we'll get to the mini stock in a moment. It's going to be cool to talk about that. Um, yeah, replacing the F82 in, in most series and the Power Tour. It's going to be a single make series with this car now. Um, so this will be the new, the new GT4 Michelin Pilot Challenge, blah, 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 blah car. Um, I probably will buy it because I run the the bmw gt4 when i do run gt4s um, and that being said the 2018 f82 version of this car is not going to be in those series anymore but it will be added to production car challenge kind of as a pseudo version i think of the um, the bmw m2 cup series car because they look a little bit alike m2 is i think a little bit less powerful than the gt4 um but yeah the gt4 uh the f82 is going to replace the mustang in the in pcc so it'll be a new top level car for that for that multi-class series which will be very interesting and i think I'll, i don't necessarily know if a lot of mustang people are going to be really happy about that so you know i guess I guess that car is probably going away anyways. I think the Dark Horse R is on the way at some point. It, it just seems with IMSA doing the single spec series of that, the single make spec series, uh, it feels like an inevitability at some point that they're going to do that. But uh, yeah, so if you want to race the old car, you're going to have to race it in PCC or in private stuff. Um, if you want to race a new car, well, you got many places to go race it at. 
and also they kind of leaked this one a little bit um there's a 720 gt3 evo which is replacing the old mclaren gt3 so the fire breather is going away permanently not being put into anything else at least as far as we know at the moment um, so it's just going to be legacy content now but yeah this is the new um the new mclaren 720 uh, GT3 Evo, which is the car that, as you can see here from this embedded post, um, FAF Motorsports up in Canada. This is actually their car that they've scanned and done all of the work with. So that'll be very cool. Probably expect to see the the um, the plaid FAF scheme will be like the default one on this. That's usually what they do. Um, yeah, that will be on its way to everything that runs the GT3, everything that runs the McLaren right now is getting that car. And as Jason said, the mini stock. So in case you've been, you know, poking around, you see all these mini tracks like Nashville Mini um, and Stafford Mini iRacing, we know it exists. Give us Stafford Mini, please. Um, about all these mini tracks, maybe even some of the Legends tracks. Um, what kind of car race is there? This. Um, this race is there. It's basically a lower power street stock. Uh, it'll be a rookie class car, so it'll be asphalt and dirt. Free for everybody. We'll probably check it out, I'm sure. Week 13. Um, they've added a couple of new things. Uh, they now have spotty rain, which is kind of like gives you a bigger window for when it can rain. So it's not just like it will rain at this point and this point and this point. Maybe it'll rain, maybe it won't. Maybe a little more realistic option. Can't say I can't say I don't like it. Um, I'm still learning to drive in the rain as well. So hopefully, you know, anything gets more practice is probably good. Uh, additional rain tires. Whole TCR class is getting it. The uh, Clio, the Ford FR500S, which means that production car challenge will have rain next season now. Um, Clio Cup will have it. Uh, Michelin Pilot Challenge will have have it. TCR races will have it. Uh, the uh, the Skip Barber series will have it enabled. They run the Mustang in that now. It'll be the only thing that's running the Mustang now. So lots of lots of new things. I think this part is the part that I'm most looking forward to now. We've got some um, dirt enhancement stuff that are working still working on dirt. Uh, but qualifying visibility in real life, we can see all racers on their qualifying laps happening right in front of our eyes, blah, 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 blah. Uh, as you know, everybody does their own single thing. It's very hard to police cheesing because you can't really see anything. Um, in fact, for you know for FTF, which you just ran, um, when I do cheese checks, you have to actually pull up your replay and replay it back in Discord to, to Jake or Justin or whoever's admitting for that night. Uh, so this will presumably take that out of the picture entirely and they can check everybody at the same time because in the replay screen you will see everybody on the track qualifying at the same time so yeah if you've been cheesing you should stop cheesing right now you should have stopped cheesing a while ago but you, sh you should have really stopped cheesing right now because it's going to be really obvious in a little bit um, and then they've also done this enhanced multi-manufacturer and multi-class splitting algorithm. That's going to more or less really affect the special event. So especially, so especially something like the Daytona 24. If you've ever run a special event on iRacing, you know what happens. The first like 10 splits, you get a nice mix because it'll, it'll have enough cars where it can fill all of the classes. Um, but you know, once you get past that, once you start getting into the middle teens and start even getting below that, you start to see like one, the class that has the lowest amount of signups disappears, and the rest of it is just filled with GTPs and GT3s. And then eventually, usually at the bottom, it's, it's the most popular car, which tends to be a GT3 for like the 24 hours of Daytona, for example. Um, it'll just be a split of nothing but GT3s. Sounds like what they're doing with the algorithm is trying to reduce. The likelihood that that happens anymore and also trying to reduce like likelihood of everybody running the same car in this in the split so um, they want to 
shake up diversity. It's gonna be very interesting to see how that does it. If it, if you run a certain car, maybe you get in top split, in the top in a higher split now than you normally would, um, just because maybe that car doesn't have enough people running it. So, yeah, it's, it could be really interesting. There's some additional UI stuff, instant instant AI racing, uh, two a fact two factor on account management. Always good. Um, and then some of the other stuff they're working on, tire and physics updates, graphics engine update. You can see there's a little GIF here it's going. Uh, the UI, which we know they've been working on that. Track upgrades is interesting here. Um, Zolder is on its way. So that will be, that has been part of the iRacing experience since 2010. We're getting a graphical update for Zolder. Uh, and also, it looks like New Hampshire is is also next on the list for uh, for NASCAR stuff. But they're doing they're doing all of the NASCAR things. So eventually, for NASCAR 25, they're doing they're doing art asset upgrades for all of them. So um, for I, I assume a lot of that stuff will end up being shared between teams, um, kind of like somehow the the World of Outlaw stuff was shared a little bit between iRacing Racing Minnesota, which was formerly Monster monster games um but still might be monster games i don't know but yeah it's the same entity uh yeah future content is probably where we want to jump to that's very cool um so far everything is neat nothing that's really like that jumps out at me as being like you know so far everything that we've had just kind of been like okay on the point new cars a couple new tracks uh, one, maybe two new tracks. One's a rescan. One, one new, whole new track. They've been busy. They've been really, really busy. So, this first paragraph made me raise an eyebrow when I went back and, and reread it. Future content. Our content teams have been certainly been busy, and the iRacing Laser Scan team has been racking up frequent flyer miles. In fact, they just returned from a month on a road to the western half of the U.S. They were in my neighborhood, sort of, kind of. We're going to capture a great deal of data for the future. So I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say this. Y'all got Portland in there? But yeah, uh, some of the content they're going to going to review here high racing scan team arrives at the bend hey that's cool i think i know where that track is um so we're off from thruxton yeah we're scanning the bend this week which is a very large track in australia um supercars go there uh there's international gt also races there there's a ton of track layouts there's at least like six if not more i don't know how many we're getting i would assume we're probably getting at least four of them um, and plan to visit Adelaide in November when the supercars are there. Yo, we're getting the Adelaide street circuit. Hex. Yeah. So this, this will probably be the modern circuit. It won't be the old circuit. Um, the F1 race on this is going to be the supercar circuit. This will be there. Second Street Circuit that is on the service, I think, that is actually located within a city. So Long Beach being the other one. But now that we know that they can do Long Beach, should not be an issue with getting Adelaide in there and getting that all done. That's a cool track. I'm looking forward to that. Um, Valencia is under contract. So those of you who thought the FIA tie-in, um, that we would get Ricardo Tormo Valencia, good on you. You, you guessed right. Um, so we've been trying to get traction with Circuit Asen, which is in the Netherlands. Um, it is primarily known for it as being a motorcycle track. If you've been here for some past streams with um, with the PR um, the PRC folks, we've raced that in the Seto Corsa and various cars. Um, it's a fun track, um, kind of tricky, but it's fun. They had trouble getting a response. Update on that, they were able to get a hold of them. 
Also, apparently, if you are a track that's trying to get a hold of iRacing, please, please stop for the moment. Um, because that was the thing that apparently has been going on. I guess except Berlin. But we'll see. We'll see how we'll see how that shakes out. Uh, anyways, our scan team has made stops at several NASCAR tracks to get us most up-to-date meta for our NASCAR refresh. Yeah, so if they're doing some rescans of some of the NASCAR tracks. So probably some of the older ones that they haven't been to in a while. Um, those would be the ones I would assume we'll see. Um, the West the West thing, actually, I'll, I'll go ahead and say it because there's a photo down here later. Um, Sonoma is one of them. Not a shock. They mentioned that, <laughs> that they went and did a Sonoma scan, and then the track came up the next day, so they had to redo it. You said Speedway is underway and will debut in both iRacing and World of Outlaws Dirt Racing 24. Another World of Outlaws track, you said Speedway, aka the car sponsor for uh, David Gravel, will be uh, will be in iRacing and World of Outlaws Dirt Racing 24. That is cool. Um, little track up in the Dakotas that does a lot of um, uh, dirt racing, so that's really cool. Dirt road content is being actively developed. Again, we went west. Hey, Chris, did you scan Glen Helen? Please and thank you. All right, there we go. Here we go. Multiple new GT3 cars are in planning and development. Well, that's sure interesting because I'm trying to think what, what other GT3 cars are there. Are you racing? What else is out there? What don't you have? I would say the, the ones you don't have uh, are the ones that are still out there. The, the Lexus and the Aston. And there's been a rumor floating around for a while that, that y'all scanned Harder Racing's Aston. So um, we'll see how that shakes out, rumor-wise. Uh, new supercars just merely miss, barely missed the Season 4 build, which I knew about. Um, just so the Gen 3s are probably coming Season 1 2025. Um just a guess if they just missed the build they'll probably be in the next one so those of you that want the gen 3 supercars as long as everything works out we should see those in about three months um plan a total haul this is really cool this is something i'm really excited about plan a total haul overall of the legend car physics model to take advantage of updated data new engine specification and a new tire and they're going to make them friendlier to run on road tracks which is a big thing that they do over in europe um there's a lot of like especially in like central and eastern europe and i guess maybe in the uk as well from what i've seen they do a lot of legends road racing and i'm i am here for it i love this it's a great car it's fun to drive it's easy to learn i am here for the road racing Give me the road racing and the Legends cars. Yes. Yes, please. Uh, Oval Racing will see many great additions in 2025, beginning with this might be a, this might be a hint that it could be a season one release. Proper Gen 4 car release. We know what those are. It's the 03 Monte Carlo and the 04. Uh, no, it's the 03 Taurus. It's it's 03 for both. It's it's Matt Kenseth's Taurus and Kevin Harvick's. Monte Carlo have been scanned and those those will be what's coming in to replace the current Gen 4 car. Um, and at long last we're revisiting Arca. So that Arca car, that Gen 4 car that we race all the time, the one that they're racing right now in ASRC that I am not racing right now because I don't want to kill my wrist at Indianapolis. Um, yeah, that's going to become legacy content and we're going to get a pair of Gen 4 cars and we're probably going to get an Arca, an actual modern day Arca car. Hype. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, we'll see how that drives. Uh, I love Arca and I've run that series frequently all the time. Um, it's really helped me learn to be a better road racer, uh, not road racer, oval racer. And if it was a road racer, it'd be MX5. Um, yeah. So looking forward to that. We're lining up the scan for new dirt road cars. So not a lot, not a lot to talk about with that. I actually do know more than I really can can tell y'all about some of this stuff. Um, I have I have I have my sources now. Um, 
I know things people will talk, you know, people are like, you know, hey, if you can keep your mouth shut, I'll tell you some of the cool stuff we're working on kind of stuff. And I am going to keep my mouth shut on that. But there is some cool, there is some really cool stuff um, coming in the future. So uh, stay tuned for that. Yeah, so looking forward, looking forward to that. To really discuss some of the vehicles hinted at in our previous updates, but I know there are some really cool projects and the works for the future. No puns or hints at this time. Okay. Um, so yeah, and I won't I won't talk about anything that I I've heard about, um, just because. Uh, yeah, but yeah, it'd be cool, um, especially with some of the the West Coast stuff. Maybe we get. Um, you know, maybe we do get Portland. Maybe we get Evergreen Speedway up in up in Washington. Finally, you know, it's a good short track, especially with the mini stock. There's a there's a smaller oval inside of the big oval up there. That'd be really, really, really good. I think um, set to have. So a couple other things. Blah blah blah. Oval refresh. Phase two's been mentioned. Um, and then there's some photos here of all the various things. That they've been working on. Um, ah, there we go. So we'll click on this one because it's actually kind of neat. So this is a uh, this is Sonoma. This is actually like this is Sonoma. Which part of the track is this? It's not actually part of the track. It's a hill on top of the track, but this is this is like a parking lot. <laughs> It's on top of a hill overlooking a parking lot and you can see if, if that wasn't obvious that was Sonoma from the hills and you got the California license plate on the rental vehicle and the scanner there's the bend hey look there's spa there's the fancy new spa I was telling you about the big runoff area and rowdy on coming up the hill here right when you get to the top there's all the trees and stuff Yay! There's Zolder. Alright, Zolder refresh. Work in progress on that. And then this bad boy, I spent way too long looking at this trying to figure out which car they were which car this was. And the answers were really obvious. There's two things that should have made this really obvious. One, this door is is skull wing and swung open. How many Gullwing cars are there in IMSA? There's one. <laughs> There's one. It's the 720. And then this pattern on the roof, um, as you can see, it's like this carbon fiber and then the mat and the carbon fiber and the mat and then the carbon fiber. That's the, um, if you've ever seen the, the FAF car, that's actually the, the plaid pattern on the roof is carbon fiber mat, carbon fiber mat. That's how they that's how they make that work so this is just when they were getting audio for the mclaren so no secrets this time no secret surprises it's not the it's not that not secretly the aston or the or the the lexus that they were scanning and this is a teaser and you're supposed to be eagle-eyed to figure it out um no there's nothing in there nothing in there it's just you know it's just them doing audio stuff for that and apparently they're doing some new audio things uh where did i want to go oh yeah the um the season four schedule stuff blah 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 blah. greg west big post after development update talking about event they're going to do a testing event uh, week 13 some of the stuff we talked about with the gt4 evo and the f82 claren evo um the, uh, the, the Lamborghini is going to be in the Nürburgring Endurance Championship now. Yay! Um, Rainmaster Series, which I think right now is just Ferrari, will have the entire GT3 class. Yay! Um, it's going to be a mini stock series. They'll be running 30 minutes offset from street stock, so you can do both. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So these are all the... All the rain enabled stuff, TCR virtual challenge, blah blah blah. Look at that. Look at that. It's like all the things I talked about. A um, couple of new series making debuts outside of new content. The Junior Open Wheel Oval Challenge Fix will be a D level license with the uh, 
um, the Indie Pro 2000 PM18 running on Opals. Cool. So, expect that to be chaos. Uh, can be a Legend Road Cup fix at the D license level. Yay! Using a lot of base package tracks to get people on the track easier. So, it'll be kind of a, a lower level entry series. Um, Piling a program at the Rookie Open Wheel Series with the Formula B Sim Magic Series and the 1600 Rookie Sim Motion Series fixed. Switching to run every 30 minutes to every hour. Staggering start time to see. There'll be a race going off every 15 minutes to see the impact on participation. Cool. I'm, I'm all for A B testing. Um, something similar with FIA F4 Esports Regional Tour. Gonna run every hour. Ah, here we go. This is the big thing. Lastly, we have adjusted time slots for the Pro 2 Off-Road Racing Series Fix and the 4, Pro 4 Fix Series, along with changing race distances in multiple off-road series, including the Rookie Series, to allow drivers to back-to-back -back races more often. Chris Leone will provide more context on this next week. Hey. Hey, Chris. Chris. Chris, tell us about the Pro 4 stuff. Chris. 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 <laughs> He's never going to watch this. Alright. Well, that's kind of a little bit of a recap for, for this season. Sounds like there's a lot of well, small things coming, but there's a lot in the works. Like, this is a huge list, and there's probably even more. If, if you know anything about my racing, there's more stuff on this list than that they haven't gotten announced yet. So... Stay tuned. It's gonna be out there eventually. We'll get it figured out. If you are a if you are a tester, do not leak this stuff. Do not. It is not worth it. No amount of no amount of uh, internet cred is gonna be worth it. Trust me. 